So we would expect that the ping pong ball would slow down more sooner than the golf ball would. So we want to know which one is the most likely the overall acceleration with time t. Well, we know that the acceleration caused by gravity g is in this direction. And we know the direction of the acceleration caused by the air resistance is in that direction. The result of those two is this acceleration. It is larger than gravity. Now, the two ways we could draw this are to turn it into a parallelogram, or we could transplant this air and put it here. Gravity plus the air resistance would give us this overall resultant. And if you notice, this says the acceleration is less than gravity. That's going to be false. We can see that this resulting gra uh, acceleration is bigger than gravity. This one says the acceleration is greater than gravity, which is true, and it's off to an angle. And these two say that the direction is, is still straight downward, and that can't possibly be true. If you have a force acting on a body this way and a force acting on that way, it is not going to be just downward. So we have the acceleration greater than g and off at that angle. So this next question, we can see they're comparing three different examples. And in class, in the lessons on these, we considered all three of these, or them like them when we throw a ball upward or throw a ball downward or drop it. <clears throat> now, what's different about these is these are two-dimensional versions of what we did. We just threw it upward or threw it downward or threw it or dropped it. Now, what's different about all of these or what's similar, what's different about all of these is these have a horizontal component, but otherwise they're the same. This has a V0Z, initial velocity upward. This has a V0Z, an initial velocity downward. And this has a V0Z equal to zero. So this is like the drop. This is the thrown down. And this is the thrown up. The fact that it's two-dimensional really doesn't change the qualitative effect of the projectile because what's going to happen is V0Z is going to decrease to zero and then it's going to increase and come back down. So what we want to know, <clears throat> the identical speeds, they're launched in the directions indicated above. The magnitude of VY, VZ, of the velocity immediately before it hits the ground. So in other one, words is, which one has the greatest vertical velocity? Now, if we recall from this, this is going to increase and accelerate by g. This one that's thrown downward already has an initial velocity. It has an initial velocity downward. So what you could suspect then is that this is going to get to the ground faster. It's going to take less time. And if we remember from the one thrown upward, because of symmetry, this is going to go up and it's going to come down. But this V0Z that it had initially is going to be the, v, v, the VZ it has when it reaches that same point. So what is absolutely not intuitively obvious, and we saw this with the purely vertical projectiles, is that this case and this case, in terms of the velocities, are exactly the same. They're exactly the same because when this one goes up and comes down and gets to this point, it has the same velocity as this one does when it's thrown downward. So these two, in terms of the impact velocity, they're falling the same distance with the same initial velocity. They're going to have the same impact. So we expect one and two must be equal to each other. All right, so that, this one says that one and two are different. That's out. Choi, this one's out, and this one's out. So the question is, is the velocity of 3 the, the same? Now, we might just want to intuitively say we know the answer to this. But let's pick, let's pick a distance. Let's say the distance is, let's say the vertical velocity downward is 20 meters per second, and the cliff is uh, 60 meters tall. Well, if we do the drop downward, we have our time our acceleration, our instantaneous velocity, our average velocity, and our delta z. 0, 1, 2, 3. Our acceleration, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. Our initial velocity for the drop is 0, minus 10, minus 20, minus 30. 
Gravity causes them to change their speed by 10 meters per second every second. The cumulative average velocity is meaningless at zero seconds, but it's minus 5 here, minus 10, and minus 15. The delta Z is average velocity times time, so we have 0, minus 5, minus 20, minus 45. So we haven't reached 60 meters yet. So here's 4, minus 10, minus 40, minus 20, and we have minus 80. So we can see that it's going to hit the ground between 3 and 4 seconds. <clears throat> The velocity between 30 and 40 uh, meters per second. But now, in this other case, we're just going to add our velocities, our average velocities and our delta z's. Our velocity at time 0 is minus 20. Then it's minus 30, minus 40, minus 50. Average velocity, meaningless, but minus 25, minus 30, minus 20, uh, minus... <laughs> Uh, 35. So delta Z is average velocity times time. So 0, minus 25, minus 60. So we can see it's going to reach minus 60. It's going to reach minus 60 in 2 seconds. Now the velocity that it has when it hits the ground at 2 seconds over here is going to be between 40, it's going to be exactly 40 centimeters, or 40 meters per second. Whereas when it was dropped, it was between 20 and 30. So this is rock one and rock two. And this is rock three, the drop. So we can see is the velocity, oops, the impact velocity will be 40 here when it's thrown downward or thrown upward. It'll be between 20 and 30 if it's dropped. So we can then see that these two are both greater than 3. So choice A is the answer. They're not all equal to each other.